Hello, good evening everybody. Um, Karen, this is a video for you. This is a video about HubDoc, so thank you for requesting it in the group this evening. I'm going to give you a quick demo of HubDoc and hopefully you'll find that helpful. So first of all, what is HubDoc? HubDoc is something that comes free with Zero, and it can help you get your supply invoices and receipts into Zero. You don't have to use it. It's it's there if you want it, but you don't have to use it. And at the end of the video, I'm going to explain why um, some business owners should use it and why some business owners shouldn't. And once you've seen the video and the demo, and at the end of the video, why I explain the pros and cons, then you can just decide for yourself if this is something that you would find useful. So HubDoc. When, once you've uh, linked your Xero and HubDoc account together, this is what you'll find on the front screen. Now, just quickly on some of the settings, in the top right-hand side here, you've got settings cog. And if we just work um, right to left, integration. So this will just tell you which Xero you've got this connected to. Obviously, it's connected to Resolve Bookkeeping Limited. This is my own limited company. Um, and I use HubDoc for some of my stuff, not for all of it, which will become clear at the end. So that's what it's connected to. Um, you can also connect it some, to some of these others. Obviously, you've got QuickBooks there, you've got Bill.com, you've got um, Cloud Storage, if you want to. Okay, there's lots of different options. Under the organization, this again is just about the organization that it's um, linked to. And this organization email address Claire G six at me.com does not exist. It's not a real email address. So when you first set up HubDoc, it will ask you for an email address. You can put anything you like in there because it doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't actually go anywhere. So that's why I've got a random one there. This um, long string here is my email address for HubDoc. So my own Resolve Bookkeeping Limited email address to HubDoc. And you can use that to email your supplier invoices into HubDoc. So you can simply copy and paste that, put it in your Outlook or your Gmail, save it as a contact. And then every time you get an invoice from a supplier, you can just forward that email with the attachment straight into HubDoc. You can edit this email here. You can edit anything in this gray box, um, sorry, blue box, if you want to, you don't have to, you can leave it as it is. And then a couple of tick box down here, data extraction tick. We want to data extract from the uploaded documents. Yes. And because I'm VAT registered in zero, I also want HubDoc to um, extract the VAT data as well when it sees it in HubDoc. Users. So it's just me, but you can invite other users into your HubDoc accounts. You might have some, um, you know, VA or some admin people helping you. So you can have more than one person using the same HubDoc account. And then you've got, I don't know what hide accounts is, hide accounts to exclude them from HubDoc. I thought, oh, actually fetching. So a while back, HubDoc used to be able to go and fetch your invoices for you. So say you had um, a, um, a British Telecom business phone bill, you could hook up HubDoc to British Telecom and then every month it would go and fetch your invoices. So suck them into HubDoc, but HubDoc stopped doing that a while back, probably because of the two factor authentication now that everyone has to do, um, just made it impossible for HubDoc to connect. I don't know, but they stopped doing it anyway. Um, and then manage accounts here, similar type of thing. You can add direct connections to some of these suppliers if you want to, but generally, there we go, add account up there. But you can have a look round, have a look round at the, the settings, but to use it in its basic form, you don't have to change any settings, okay? You can just leave them as they are. Once it's connected to zero, you're good to go. So on the, the main screen here, talks about some of the other things you can connect to, and we've got a big green tick there to say I've connected to zero, which is great. So what do we want to do? We want to upload a document. So what, I'm just going to get rid of these because I've done a little test earlier just to make sure it was going to work. 
So what HubDoc is for, it is to facilitate putting your supplier invoices and your receipts into Zero for you. Okay, so by supplier invoices, I mean those things that get emailed to you, so a PDF invoice, or maybe you've bought something online and they emailed you an invoice afterwards, or you've had to download an invoice from somewhere online. And by receipt, I mean, just, just me, this is my terminology, I mean a piece of paper that you've got a receipt for. So you've bought a train ticket, you know, you've got the receipt, that's a piece of paper. Um, you've bought a meal, you've taken your clients out for a meal, and they've given you a receipt at the end of the day. It's a piece of paper. So both of those things, supplier invoices and receipts, can be uploaded into HubDoc. And then once they're in HubDoc, you basically use HubDoc to push them down into zero. Okay, so the ways you can get documents in, you can drag and drop them into this space here. You can email them in using that email address. And here's your email address here. So you just copy that email address, save it in your Outlook or your Gmail or whatever you use. And then when your suppliers send you their invoices, you can just email them in. You can download the HubDoc app on your phone and you can take photos of your receipts. So you probably, you might want to use all three of them. Most people just use the email in and the app on their phones, take receipts. But if you like to store all of your documents on your computer, for example, and you've already got them all saved somewhere, then dragging and dropping is, is quite useful because you can drag and drop a whole bulk, a whole load of them. You don't have to do them one by one. So let's do drag and drop for this demo. So here's some I prepared earlier. I'll, I'll drag and drop one to start with. So this is a parking ticket not a parking ticket, can't claim for that, a car parking receipt. <laughs> it was a photo, but I just saved it down to my desktop for the purposes of this demo. And I've dragged and I've dropped it in here. And it said it's complete. Now all that's done at the moment, it's just loaded into HubDoc. It hasn't done anything with it, but it's sitting there in HubDoc waiting for us to do something. And the other thing I'm going to drag and drop, but I could equally have emailed this in, is a PDF invoice from HP Instant Ink. So they're the people who I get my ink cartridges from. I'm, a, I'm also going to drag and drop that same HP Instant Ink invoice in. Okay, because as a business owner, you're busy, you might drag and drop things in twice, not on purpose. Obviously, you might do some one day, some another day, you might one day you might email them in to yourself and the next day you might drag and drop. You know, duplicates happen. We do things twice as busy business owners. So I wanted to drop it in there twice so that I can show you how HubDoc would deal with that. So we've put them all in there and maybe we've done this every day or you might do a big catch up at the end of the week and you just push everything through. So we'll close that down. Now if we go to the review tab, I'll just give it a... F5 to refresh. Hope it doesn't log me out. No, it doesn't. So under the review tab, these are the three that I just dragged and dropped in. So straight away, HubDoc has said, oh, we've got a potential duplicate here. Now it is because before I press record on this video, I dragged and dropped this one in to make sure it was going to work. So there is a duplicate in the system, although I've only showed you one, but this is quite a good a good test. So we can say, okay, show me duplicates. And it would then pull in this one and this one. Okay. And you can just have a quick glance through and say, actually, yep, yeah, they are one in the same. So I'm going to move one of these to trash. I'm just going to move that one out. So now we're back to one. So on the right hand side, these are all the details that you now need to enter. The top half is primarily the details that HubDoc requires, and the bottom half is primarily the details that Xero requires. So on the top, you've got a supplier that's called Car Park. Anything with a red asterisk is compulsory, you have to enter data in there. You've got the date. Now HubDoc has read all of the data that's on this screen. HubDoc has um, used AI to pull that data through itself. I haven't typed anything in here. So it's picked up the date, 
19th of March 2022. Picked up the amount, £12.40. It's got zero rated expenses. Now, the reason it's zero rated is because in order to claim VAT, you must have a VAT number on a receipt, and this one doesn't. Okay, so even though there's VAT on this receipt, there's no VAT number on this receipt, so we can't claim the VAT. So that would be a zero rated expense. And then down here, this is the information that zero needs. So it's a purchase. So I'm going to publish it as a purchase. The status is awaiting payment. Now you can post things as drafts, but then you'd have to go into zero and approve them. So if you're the only person doing this, then you'd put it straight to awaiting payment. If maybe you've got a VA doing things for you, you might ask them to put it as draft or awaiting approval and then you would go into zero and approve it potentially but most of the time you'll want it to go straight to awaiting payment the contact um, is Eb Ebsfleet Crap Park like that love the spelling Ebsfleet Car Park now zero Sorry, Hubdoc will now talk to Zero and say, have you got a contact in Zero called Ebsfleet Car Park? It hasn't. It says no Zero contact found. So it's suggesting we add Ebsfleet Car Park as a new contact. So you click OK and then you click Create. So that has now created an Ebsfleet Car Park contact in Zero. OK, and then choose the account code. In this case, it's travel. So it's 493 and just a description of what it was for. Two configurations that may help you or may not. So this first one I always tick is save configuration. So if you went to International Car Park at Ebsfleet again, HubDot would know because it would recognize the details and it would know that you want to post it to Ebsfleet Car Park and you want to post it to account code 493 and you want a description of car park. It would also save the fact that it's zero rated. Now check that next time because the next receipt you get might actually have a VAT number and then you can claim it. But it does a lot of this for you because you've saved configuration. The other checkbox is auto sync. So what that means is it can automatically post this into zero for you. So if you saved auto, so if you save configuration, it will draw out the same details. Obviously, it will change the amount because you might park for five hours rather than two. But you can auto sync it. So you can get HubDoc to now automatically push that into zero. I personally don't ever tick that because I quite like to come into HubDoc, quickly eyeball the information before I push it into zero. That way I know anything that's in zero I've already eyeballed and I'm happy with I haven't then got to go through zero and just check it you know at the end of the day hubdoc zero dext you know whatever system you're using is a computer and computers can get things wrong as can humans <laughs> but if you've got a computer checking it and then a human coming in and just eyeballing it as well chances are you're going to catch any errors so I don't ever auto sync but that's a personal choice so once you're happy with the details up the top and down the bottom, you just click publish and that would then push that bill into zero, awaiting payment so that when you come to your bank feed, you'll have a nice green match option on your bank feed and just click OK. So what the other one that I uploaded just for a test here was HP Instant Ink. Again, it's picked up. It's a duplicate. Now it would because this is a real um, invoice to me to um, resolve bookkeeping for my ink. So I've dragged and dropped a real invoice in that I'd already dragged and dropped back in January 2022. But you can see because I've got this auto save configuration ticked, it's saved everything here for me. So all I'm now doing is eyeballing it. I'm checking the amount. I know it's always £3.49. That's the payment plan I'm on with Instant Ink. It's going to IT software and consumables. The description is ink. Just hit publish. And then you just go through each receipt 
an invoice doing exactly the same thing. So why would some business owners want to use this and some wouldn't? So if you have so same suppliers every month sending you very, very similar invoices, the amounts might be different. But if you always use HP Instant Ink, their invoice is always going to look like this. Even if the amount is different, you might print a lot one month and it might be £10. HubDoc is going to populate, auto-populate everything in here for you, including the amount, including the VAT, if you're that registered, the account code you want to go it to, and a description. So all you would do is come into HubDoc, obviously check for duplicates. This is a test situation, so you know, it's a bit false. Check for duplicates. But you would come into HubDoc, quickly eyeball, and go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, publish. You've had to do no typing. You've had to do nothing other than either email that bill into HubDoc or drag and drop it off your, off your dashboard. It's done everything for you. So if you have the same suppliers and you buy the same types of thing from those suppliers every month, even if the amounts are different, then HubDoc will massively speed up your bookkeeping. If, however, you have lots of different suppliers every month, so say HP Instant Inc, pretty much you're going to have them every month. But if that's the only thing in your business, which is a constant cost to you and everything else is from different suppliers, maybe you travel a lot. So you're staying in different hotels, you get on different trains. Um, maybe you just have different suppliers every month. Maybe you maybe you sell widgets and the suppliers that supply you with the stuff, your widgets just change every month because you're constantly looking for you know the best price or better customer service or something. If you have different suppliers, then every time you send an invoice into HubDoc, you're going to have to go through all these steps and then all these steps down here. And then the next month, you'll have completely different suppliers again and you'd have to go through all those steps. So if you have the same suppliers selling you the same thing, HubDoc will massively speed up your bookkeeping. If you have different suppliers, it will probably slow you down. And I'll suggest you don't use it, HubDoc, and you just put them straight into zero. So that was a whistle stop tour of HubDoc. Hope that was helpful, Karen. Uh, let me know um, if it was useful and if there's anything that you didn't know it could do, or if it was the first time you'd seen it, then hopefully it was all useful. For anybody else who watched the video, thank you for watching. If you would like to request your own demo for next week. I'm going to be doing a demo video every Wednesday. Please let me know what you'd like me to demo of. And next week, I will put you on the list and hopefully demonstrate your thing. Thanks then.